We have no shortage of hot exoplanets. They're everywhere. Planets closer to their stars are just easier to detect, so we see more examples of them. So while planets extremely close to their stars aren't necessarily common, they're just so easy to spot that we know of a disproportionate amount of them. Because they're easy to spot, a lot of them are also easier to study than other types of planets. This is especially interesting in the case of hot, rocky planets. Currently, rocky planets outside the solar system are difficult to study, but we have an easier time for the ones closer to their stars. This is because if they transit from our perspective, transits are not only more frequent, but sharper. That makes it much easier to study the planet's atmosphere, and this has been done to some success on several hot, rocky exoplanets. One such planet is Chingluan. Welcome to episode 3 of my underrated exoplanet series, where I go for exoplanets that don't receive as much attention as they deserve. I've already covered Felinciam, my personal favorite exoplanet, in other videos, and this one will be about Chingluan. Chingluan is one of the many hot rocky exoplanets we know of, about 82 light years away from Earth, orbiting the red dwarf star Donfeng. It was discovered just five years ago in 2020 using the TESS telescope. Its star, which was at the time designated L168-9, was a fairly typical red dwarf about 60% the mass and radius of the Sun. Its planet was then designated L168-9b. It was originally thought to be about 4.6 times more massive than Earth and 39% larger than it in radius, though this was later refined, which I'll get to later. It takes about 1.4 days to complete a full orbit of L168-9, with a distance to its star of about 0.02 AU, 50 times closer to its star than Earth is from the Sun. This planet transits its star from our perspective, and because of its size, was a very good target for study for the James Webb Space Telescope. At face value, it looked pretty similar to the more well-known planet Janssen, which is over double its mass, and was found a few months ago to likely have a thick atmosphere. When James Webb came online about two years after L168-9b was discovered, it was one of its first targets for study. At about this time, it was given an official name by the IAU. In 2022, the International Astronomical Union, the organization in charge of the names of pretty much all space objects, created a competition that allowed the public to officially name 20 exoplanets. All 20 of them were to be studied by James Webb in the near future, and one of them was L168-9b. By 2023, it was named Qingluan after a mythological bird from ancient China. Its star was named Donfeng at the same time, for the same reason. This makes Qingluan one of only eight rocky planets that have been named, which is interesting because there are 165 total exoplanets with names, meaning 157 of them are gas giants, and Qingluan is part of a very rare club of rocky exoplanets with names, which there are less than 10 members of. Anyways, at the time, Qingluan was expected to be about 4.6 Earth masses and 1.39 Earth radii. This suggested it had a high density, which couldn't indicate it was made of a roughly equal ratio of rock and heavier metals, which meant it might have a large core like Mercury. However, James Webb observations led to a refinement of these measurements. Qingluan's new mass was somewhere around 4.07 Earth masses, with some uncertainty, and its radius was increased to 1.63 Earth radii. These new measurements led to a significantly lower density for the planet, which actually made it have a lower density than Earth. So Qingluan was most likely not a supermercury after all. Of course, it was still an incredibly hot rocky planet. James Webb also measured its temperature of around 1340 degrees Fahrenheit, or 725 Celsius, which is around double the temperature of Venus. This is hot enough for some types of rock to melt, so depending on what type of rock Qingluan is made of, it could have large bodies of molten lava on its surface. It's almost certainly tightly locked to Donfeng as well, meaning it has a permanent day side and permanent night side. Because of this, Qingluan's environment could go one of two ways, depending on one very important factor, whether or not it has an atmosphere. If Qingluan is airless, then its night side could be exceptionally cold, like Mercury or the Moon. But if it has a thick atmosphere, then heat could be transferred over to the night side, allowing things like lava lakes to exist over there as well. James Webb have studied several hot rocky exoplanets to see whether or not they have atmospheres, but they've all been very different from Qingluan, and have all had different results. Janssen, which you might know as 55 Cancri E, was found to have strong evidence for a dense carbon dioxide dominated atmosphere. It's double the mass of Qingluan and much hotter. Larger planets are more likely to host atmospheres because they have stronger gravitational pulls and the potential for larger magnetic fields, which both help resist the stripping away of atmospheres. This is likely why smaller hot rocky exoplanets like Tahe, just 60% of Earth's mass, was found to most likely be airless by James Webb. The larger Kuakua, 1.3 Earth masses, was also found to likely have little to no atmosphere. But it also hasn't all been negative. 
K2141b, a 5 Earth mass hot rocky planet, has shown some hints of a thin atmosphere. There are a ton of factors that go into whether or not a planet hosts an atmosphere. The amount of radiation it receives is a major factor. Venus is significantly colder than the other planets I've mentioned so far, but is also much smaller, just 0.8 Earth masses, and has a complete lack of a magnetic field. Despite this, Venus hosts the densest atmosphere of any rocky object in the solar system. Temperature also plays a role. The colder a planet is, the slower its molecules move. This means it takes more energy to get the gases in an atmosphere up to a planet's escape velocity. So colder planets have an easier time holding on to atmospheres, which is what we see with Titan and other moons in the outer solar system. Titan only hosts an atmosphere because of how cold it is, and if you put it in the inner solar system, that atmosphere will be blown away pretty quickly. So people were pretty curious as to whether or not Qingluan had an atmosphere. Several planets like it don't, but other planets like it do. And so James Webb searched for an atmosphere around this planet. And it found no atmospheric features. Now this does not necessarily mean that Qingluan is no atmosphere, though that is a possibility. Right now, as of the time I'm writing this video in December 2024, there are multiple scenarios that fit the James Webb data. One, Qingluan might just have no atmosphere, and that's why no features of an atmosphere were detected. Two, it could have a high altitude cloud layer. This would make the planet look featureless from James Webb's perspective, which would explain the data. And three, it could have no clouds at all, and instead a thick atmosphere composed of heavy molecules like carbon dioxide, water, and methane. Right now, the only way to tell which scenario is true is to observe Qingluan again. The study that observed it the first time was published on November 5th, 2024. So sometime next year, we could very well know which scenario is the case. I'll make an update to this video when we find out which one it is, but for now, as of the time I'm publishing this, all three are equally likely to happen. But they all lead to vastly different environments for Qingluan, so I'm going to go over what this planet could be like for all three. We'll start with Scenario 1, Qingluan is airless. This is the most boring of the three. If Qingluan is no atmosphere, it becomes pretty similar to Mercury, just way bigger and with a much lower density, tightly locked to its star. As I already explained, this would probably make its night side very cold, and it's pretty likely that lava lakes won't exist on that half of the planet. Though some heat would still reach the night side through Qingluan's interior. Its temperature in this case is low enough that a global lava ocean, like on hotter planets like Janssen and Tahe, probably doesn't exist. Though scattered lakes might, depending on what type of rocks the surface is made of. Because of its large size, it could very well have an active interior, which could mean volcanic activity is present though we can't say anything for certain yet. It's a similar case for whether or not it has a magnetic field. There are some indications that Qingluan being airless is likely. One, it orbits a red dwarf extremely closely. Janssen doesn't, it orbits a K-type star, which could explain why it has an easier time holding on to an atmosphere. That and it's two times more massive. Tahe and Kuakua orbit red dwarfs, and they're both probably airless, but they're also significantly smaller than Qingluan. When they're young, red dwarfs like to emit a ton of x-ray radiation, which is really good at stripping early atmospheres. And once a planet loses an atmosphere, it's hard to get it back. Though this planet is significantly bigger than Tahe and Kuakua, and somewhat colder, so its chances of having an atmosphere are slightly increased. All in all, if Qingluan is airless, and it very well might be, it's probably similar to Mercury, though way hotter and with more volcanic activity. And maybe even lakes of molten lava, though only on the day side of the planet. Its night side is likely cold, like every other airless rock we've seen. Next up, Scenario 2 and 3. Qingluan has high altitude clouds in an atmosphere of some kind, or an atmosphere made of heavy molecules. I'm lumping both of these together because they both mostly come to the same result. Qingluan is a super Venus. Of course, Venus is much more similar to Scenario 2, as it has a global layer of clouds that covers the entire planet. When I say Super Venus, what I mean is a very hot, rocky planet with a dense atmosphere of any kind, not necessarily an atmosphere similar to Venus's. The exact nature of this atmosphere will drastically change what Qingluan is like. For example, if it has a very strong greenhouse effect, then not only could the lava lakes be much more common, they could even potentially exist on the night side if we get lucky enough. The atmosphere is also probably extremely dense. In the cloudless scenario, it could be about 100 times thicker than Earth's atmosphere, or slightly thicker than the atmosphere of Venus, which is 93 times thicker than Earth's. It also suggests water and methane could exist here, but that might be unlikely. Because of Donfeng's strong radiation, especially when it was young, Qingluan should have lost most or all of its hydrogen and helium in the first 200 million years of its existence. 
so the existence of molecules containing hydrogen is unlikely, especially because Qingluan is now about 3 billion years old. Either way, both scenarios result in Qingluan having a dense atmosphere, which immediately made things much more interesting. Now it's capable of having weather, wind, and wind erosion, making for much more interesting terrain, on the top of the terrain lava lakes could form. It likely still has volcanic activity in any case. The area between day and night, where it's a perpetual sunset, is especially interesting in this case as, like all tidally locked planets with atmospheres, it could have extremely strong winds there. In the third scenario with no clouds, the upper atmosphere could also be relatively cold. Relatively is important there, as it would still be very hot, just cooler than the surface. So, if Qingluan has an atmosphere, it's definitely much more interesting than if it's airless, with the potential for a much more diverse environment. But right now, we can't say for certain if Qingluan has an atmosphere or not, as so far, it's only been observed once. It's likely that three eclipses of its star by Qingluan will be necessary to confirm one of these scenarios, and even then, it might not be enough. Three eclipses could rule out the cloudless CO2 atmosphere scenario, but it would still be unable to separate the airless and high-altitude clouds. Or it could confirm that Qingluan does have a cloudless atmosphere, then we don't need to worry about the other two. In short, Qingluan is in the middle of a lot of hot rocky exoplanets in terms of mass and temperature. It's not as big as Janssen or K2141b, but not as hot as Tahe, but a lot bigger and colder than Kuakua or Trappist-1b. Each of these planets have had different results on atmospheres. And right now, Qingluan is pretty much on the border between each camp. Is it big enough to hold on to an atmosphere despite its hot temperatures, or will it join smaller planets in being airless? Either way, figuring out once and for all what Qingluan is like will help immensely in determining what the population of hot rocky planets in the Milky Way is like. We'll just need to observe it more. Unfortunately, most people don't even know Qingluan exists, which definitely makes it an underrated exoplanet. We'll just have to wait and see whether it's a super Mercury or a super Venus. Either way, it'll be an extremely interesting planet. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, check out my other videos about exoplanets and space colonization.